is Megan Nelson. I'm a second year resident at Mercy Hospital. I'm focusing on pharmacy and leadership. I work closely with the leadership team at my site and work on different operations and clinical projects. So I get to work with a lot of providers and different members of our staff on different clinical initiatives to advance practice at our site. And then I also have the opportunity to work as a staff member and work side by side with our team members uh, to help provide patient care. So I'm Carrie Hager. I am a pharmacist and a clinical faculty member at uh, the College of Pharmacy on our Duluth campus. And I have previously been working as a clinician in our Employee Health and Wellbeing Center doing comprehensive medication management. I did that for about nine and a half years. And then we've recently closed that as I'm transitioning into um, a new role that's under development in our community that's going to focus on providing comprehensive medication management um, for people who have substance use disorders. Uh, Leaf Line Labs is one of two companies in Minnesota that's allowed to dispense medical cannabis. Um, I've been with the company for almost three years now. Um, obviously my role as a staff pharmacist is to um, sit with the patients, determine what's going on, and then try and come up with a action plan which includes one of our products. Uh, to try and help alleviate whatever problems they have going on. Yeah, my name is Haley County. I'm a pharmacy resident with the University of Minnesota, and I currently work with Guide Point Pharmacy and then also Northern Pines Mental Health Center. So my role on the team is more um, trying to get patients to understand all of their medications. A lot of times psychiatric medications can be a little bit confusing and they might have a few of them. Um, so I want to make sure that they are confident and um, educated on the, all of their medications and then I'm also the bridge between um, primary care and the mental health world so a lot of times the ACT team might not understand a lot of their you know, diabetes or hypertension medications so I try to um, also look at those so when I sit down with the patient my visits are usually going over their entire medication list and not only focusing on their mental health but also focusing on their um, physical health as well. For me, uh, communication with my patients is very important because a lot of times, like I mentioned, these patients don't know how to advocate for themselves with their mental health or physical health. So making sure that I am communicating everything properly, making sure they're well educated on their medications and making sure they're confident in their medications um, is really important so that they feel they can advocate for themselves. Anytime you're uh, talking to a patient, obviously if they're not understanding, if you're not able to communicate on the level that they're going to comprehend, then it's a waste of time. So mm -hmm. communication is all we do all day long, whether it's direct communication with the patient, we do telemed, where we're doing it over FaceTime or even phone consults. But um, if they get done at the end of whatever type of consult we have and don't completely understand what the plan is going forward, it obviously isn't going to work. To me, it is is the um, it's the setup for an effective meeting with somebody, so that people know what to expect. They feel welcome, and they leave feeling like it was a good interaction. Ate it, and I'll just kind of go through the steps because I think it'll, you know, flow better. But when I meet with a patient, it's, you know, the first thing I want to do before I even meet with them, actually, especially if I'm having a busy day or I'm feeling frazzled, um, or you know, my mind's at in another place. Like I take a moment to pause and take a deep breath and think, okay, clear my head, new person, let's get ready for this, so that when I meet with them, I'm ready to have, you know, be really engaged with them directly. So, you know, when I open the door or when I meet them, you know, shaking their hand looking them in the eye, potentially depending, and smiling and, and saying, welcome, hi, you know, I'm Carrie, let me introduce myself. Um... Well, I do a lot of interaction with patients when I'm going to do their medication history. So I'll introduce myself and I'll tell them why I'm there and we'll go through their medications and then I'll thank them for their time. And that's kind of just the basic outline of what a medication history looks like. 
I also do a lot of interaction with providers and a lot of that is by email. So that's a little different interaction. I still am using those same essential elements though. I have to introduce myself because I don't want them to just expect to know me because my signature at the end of my email. So I introduce myself, say what I'm doing and ask my questions and go through that and thank them for their time. Just like I would if I was talking to a patient. Duration, just explaining how long I'm going to be there is just a respectful way to let the patients know how long I'm going to be taking up their time. They're going to see a lot of people during their stay. And sometimes if they don't know how long it's going to take, they might have something else that's coming up or they have family that's coming in, just delaying those people or having letting the person know what's going on with their day. It's just a respectful way to the patient or other providers to communicate what's going on with their stay and care. I, it, depending on the situation, I may or may not give an exact amount of time. Um, sometimes if it's a time crunch, I want to make sure that we know how much time that we have so that we can make sure that their priorities get addressed and that I ask them what their priorities are. Um, other times I don't. If I have a longer period of time, sometimes if I say, well, we have an hour, they're like, what? I'm going to talk to a pharmacist for an hour. So sometimes it depends. I, I'm specific about duration. Part of AIDIT that is most important to my job is the explanation part portion of when I'm making sure that my patients know exactly why I'm there and what I'm going to do to help them kind of um, take control of their medications and thus their health. So I kind of explain that I am there to help them understand why they're taking all these medications, make sure they understand what each one is doing for them so that they can understand if they are helping or not. Uh, make sure that they aren't getting side effects from any of their medications, and then also making sure that they're um, convenient for them to be taking or it makes sense with their kind of daily lives. And then explaining what's going to happen I think is very critical. So what I'm going to do is ask you questions and talk with you about your experiences with medications, what's worked for you, what hasn't, what are your concerns or beliefs around medications so that we can look at each of your medicines, um, make sure it's working for you, how do you know it's working for you, any side effects or adverse events, and are you able to use the medication as intended? Um, and then I'll talk, and then I let them know what happens after that. So then, if there are recommendations I have, we'll talk about those, and then I'll discuss them with your healthcare team, and we can look at if there are any changes we can make to optimize your your medications for you. A lot of the times where the patients last hope, they've already done. You know, they've already done the prescription meds, they've done the um, other types of, um, of procedures. So we're kind of the last, um, the last hope. And I think part of that thank you um, needs to increase their confidence a little bit that what they're going home with is actually going to work. So we combine that with the thank you and also in hopes that they come back. So, you know, obviously if, if they don't feel we're appreciative of their business, they're not going to come back. So um, as far as all five steps go, um, I think anytime you're having um, any time of direct patient contact, that all five steps are important. For communication, my biggest advice is to learn who your audience is because you're going to have to tailor your communication based off of who you're talking to. Your medical jargon is going to be much more extensive when you're talking to a provider than it is to a patient and just learning what is appropriate to share with a patient versus sharing with a doc. Um, but my other big advice for first years would be just to step out of your comfort zone, especially in, the earlier the better, just because you'll learn so much more that way. and. I wouldn't be where I am today if I stayed in my comfort zone, so I, that would be my biggest advice for first year students. Um, you're, you are learning a lot and you're going to learn a lot about medications and you're going to learn a lot about um, medical jargon and, and pathophysiology and mechanisms of action, but I think being able to make that relatable to people, and I think you're actually at an advantage at, as an early learner because you're still learning that yourself. So you don't just have that ingrained in your brain yet. So you can be more mindful of the words that you're using with people and making sure you're not using jargon and you're able to communicate what you're trying to communicate in a way that they can understand. So I think don't be afraid to be uncomfortable. You're gonna be uncomfortable, learn from it, move on. Um, it'll feel clunky and that's okay. And then just making sure that you're doing your best to be use patient friendly language when you're talking with folks.